hello and welcome after the break. Uh, welcome to the afternoon block of the sessions. It's my great pleasure to introduce you to the facilitator of the next session, Andy Bleden. Andy is the community director at the ECH Alliance. And Andy has a long career in both funding and social care um, going back over 25 years. Um, he has also been engaged in forming alliances with pan-European groups, um, including also Convenant for Demographic uh, Change. And uh, Andy's passion is uh, the health inequalities. He works on this topic with connector partnership and with this i will give him a floor to run the session how can we use data to tackle health inequalities to you andy thank you for that this next session is now looking at the global health connector i think we don't have the, the sound can we improve the ata the american telemed association around the theme of disparities globally and how we're going to work collectively using the benefit of the partnership within the Global Health Connector Partnership, matching up those efforts within the US across the rest of the globe. Let me introduce you to Anne Mon Johnson, who's the CEO of the American Telemed Association. She's going to briefly outline some of the work that they've been undertaking within the US to target the data that's needed to address health inequities. Thank you, Andy, and thank you to the organizers of the Digital Health Summit for inviting me to talk about the work we're doing at the ATA. For those of you not familiar with the ATA, the American Telemedicine Association, we represent over 400 organizations, including leading healthcare delivery systems, academic institutions, medical groups, payers, and technology-enabled solution providers, all committed to the vision that people should access safe, effective, and appropriate care where and when they need it while enabling clinicians to do more good for more people. Our definition of telehealth includes technology-enabled communication between providers and between providers and patients. We are modality, device, and venue agnostic. We also recognize that AI powers much of what our community does and are working to ensure that the algorithms derived from AI reflect a broad population and not just a subset. Finally, we believe telehealth should not be judged or held to different standards than in-person medicine. We maintain that telehealth is health. We talk about the pandemic exposing in a raw way the huge problems we have in the healthcare system in the US. These are more than differences in outcomes. These are differences and significant variations in what evidence-based tools and resources can be accessed by whom and where. Since 1993, the Dartmouth Atlas has documented that your geography is your healthcare destiny, and specifically, not everyone enjoys the benefits of high quality medicine. Another issue is lack of access to services. One example was in mental health, where more than 50% of counties in the US had no mental health services, and yet one out of five Americans, again pre pandemic, had a need for mental health services. A third issue was an insufficient clinical workforce to cover our aging and ailing population. The number of physicians and nurses were inadequate before, and with the burnout accelerated by the pandemic, it has only gotten worse. Consequently, even before the pandemic, we had plenty of reasons to use telehealth, but adoption and engagement was not robust. And we know then, knew then, as we know now, that we cannot solve for these problems without the use of telehealth. When the pandemic really brought to the surface the extent of our healthcare disparities and inequities, the ATA formed an advisory group on using telehealth to eliminate inequities and disparities in healthcare. Our group offered a framework that reflects the different levers we must use to eliminate inequities and disparities. This framework is shown as a pyramid where connectivity is placed at the top. We did this intentionally because connectivity and the work to ensure devices can connect to the internet at broadband speeds is an obvious place to start, but we cannot stop there. 
Beneath connectivity, the pyramid shows several other components, including accessibility, affordability, literacy, trust, and cultural competence. We must use technology-enabled solutions to help address these levers. What we've realized is that the challenges we face in the US are shared around the world. They are inadequate access to evidence-based medicine, an insufficient and exhausted workforce, growing inequities, and of course, climate change. And so we are absolutely delighted to collaborate with ECH Alliance and the Global Health Connector Partnership to start addressing these issues at a global level. Just as a global pandemic requires a global response, to quote Brian O'Connor, chair of ECH Alliance, as well as the inspiration behind the Global Health Connector Partnership, we know that partnering with like-minded organizations from around the world increases the likelihood of solving these problems. Our global work group to use telehealth to eliminate disparities is focused on adopting the framework I described earlier so it incorporates realities from other countries. Our work group includes folks from the private sector and from the public sector and from commercial and academic backgrounds. We invite you to join us. Following the work on the framework, our intent is to create a heat map that shows the correlation between connectivity and important outcomes such as life expectancy. We're doing this now with the US work group, and we believe there are parts of the US and the world where you can have poor connectivity and poor outcomes, as well as good connectivity and poor outcomes. The tools you use to address one community may be different than another. The map will provide a way to direct or engage the right resources in specific communities. Addressing trust, for example, requires a different approach than addressing affordability. The work Andy and I are describing must be done at a global level and at an actionable level of geography. What we're finding is that many public data sets are not sufficiently detailed to help us examine the relationship between connectivity and outcomes. Consequently, we call on you to not only join our group, but to bring your data as well. Why are we optimistic this work will be successful? Well, many things give us optimism. I'll highlight a few in no particular order. The first is the incredible speed of innovation and the level of collaboration we witnessed during the pandemic. While there were so many elements of the pandemic that were exhausting, innovation and collaboration were energizing and heartening. One of my favorite examples is the what at, What's Apps groups that were formed. They were used to quickly relay changes in protocols or lessons learned. Information would flow from Europe to the Eastern seaboard in the US and then onto the West Coast. I'm also encouraged by the studies that point to the efficacy and validity of telehealth. One in particular was done to determine the diagnostic accuracy of a provisional diagnosis that clinicians make when they assess a patient by video telemedicine in the patient's home compared to diagnoses established in a tr traditional in-person clinic evaluation. The result was that in 87% of the patients, the provisional diagnosis following the video telemedicine consultations matched the diagnosis at the traditional in-person visit. Another recent study showed that replacing or supplementing in-person maternal care with telehealth generally results in similar and sometimes better outcomes compared with in-person care. Telehealth could improve and expand healthcare options, especially for underserved communities and those who may face barriers to accessing traditional care. Remote monitoring in several organizations led to lower hospitalizations, reduced intensive care use and reduced lengths of stay, enabling people to be cared for at home. The concept that the hospital of the future is your home is embraced by Shift Left, Stay Left, which is being led by Martin Curley, Director of Digital Innovation at Health Service Executive in Ireland. So do join us in our work. We can do so much more together. Thank you. Thank you for that, Anne. As you can see, Trying to do this across many states brings with it some uh, clear issues. But what we've found with the Global Health Connector Partnership is we can bring both the best practice and also some of the mistakes that get made in other countries too. So what we've done is, as part of the work with the Global Health Connector Partnership, is bringing together both other members of the Global Health Connector Partnership, council members and partners, 
alongside our ecosystem network, our communities that have already been looking at this area and targeting it across several different countries and continents. Following on from the work that's been undertaken by the ATA, we've looked to bring in both other council members and partners such as the International Society for Health and Telemedicine, um, alongside our ecosystems in Canada, Wales and Scotland and in England as well, to see where we can bring in best practice around health inequities and addressing health inequalities using data and best practice. This has led us to form a working group which will eventually create a thematic innovation ecosystem that will target health inequalities using telemedicine or digital health solutions, depends on where you live in the globe. What that enables us to do is both match need and solution along several different subtopics within that theme. Obviously, the clear one here is health data and how we use that to, to measure those heat spots of inequalities and equities. But obviously we can use that same approach on other topics such as where we've targeted around migration, working with uh, the most de de deprived communities in our countries. Already we've seen the benefit of this with some great best practice from our Canadian ecosystem led by, led, led by Age Well in Canada <clears throat> who highlighted a clear program how they've addressed health inequalities across Canada and some of the best practice and learnings from that. That's already been shared amongst this group. Add to that, we've been able to bring in some fantastic uh, updates from Scotland, from our Scottish ecosystem, which is led by the Scottish government and has shown demonstrable projects which have targeted health inequalities in geographical locations and on thematic areas as well both the type of work undertaken and the impact that that work brings with it. Add to that, what we've seen as well is a level of interest from our Welsh ecosystem, who are also looking at this, but on a population level basis. So what we wanna be able to do with our thematic innovation ecosystem is bring both the best practice in from America, from our, and the best practice from other providers across the US, such as health, but match that with different input from different continents, whether it's from Latin America, Europe, Australia, and now with our new African ecosystems and partnerships from Africa and India as well. Because health inequalities bite in every continent. And we see different approaches in each continent. Some of them are very similar and some of them are very different. What that thematic innovation ecosystem will do, because it's virtual, we can put people together around a table to share best practice in a way that we couldn't do before. Showing where we can use data to target those heat spots of inequalities in certain countries, in certain communities. And now we can use already available data that helps us target where we, where we know there are gaps in terms of life expectancy, quality of life indicators, employment, access to education and skills and also other measures that are being used across the globe. Because we think we've got everything measured and in, in, in a large way, we have access to already existing records to get to. However, there are some things that we've not yet targeted. Some of the new information we've got now because of the access to digital health solutions and telemedicine solutions mean that we can collect greater levels of data and greater levels of accuracy in terms of measurement of those inequalities, measurement of the impact of some of the solutions, and also share that from continent to continent. I'd like you to, as a call to action, to contact me, andy at echalliance.com, if you're interested in getting involved with this thematic innovation ecosystem. We certainly know we've got interest coming from our ecosystems in London, in Paris, across Spain, but also across Africa, Sri Lanka, and India, and Australia. If you're interested in me, contact me, and we'll make sure that you can be part of this exciting development around our thematic innovation ecosystems on health inequalities. And together, we can tackle disparities globally. Thank you very much.